the results are clear and definitive that Donald J. Trump is the next president in the United States. He had an excellent night, uh, but actually it's been fairly predictable for several weeks now that this this shouldn't have been a surprise outcome last night. And I'll go through a couple reasons I think why that was the case. First, the underlying narrative largely favored Trump. This has been consistent for months. The high levels of dissatisfaction with the economy, the border, and just the general feeling that the country was on the wrong track all favored Trump over Harris. I think the Trump team consistently did an excellent job at framing the ballot question of some version. They kind of meandered on this, but it was always some version of do you think the people in charge are working for your interests or do you want me to make changes? And that was a good converse. That was the right frame and it stuck. Harris, I think, did a good job with her significant spending advantage of contrasting, building that contrast with Trump. But the contrast kind of boiled down to Trump versus a status quo. Most people were unhappy with the status quo rather than Harris building two competing visions for change. And I think that was quite it was quite startling in the sense that even up to the closing message sequence of Kamala Harris, when asked what or how she would be different, uh, what she would do differently than, than Joe Biden, she said not a thing. It, that fundamentally undercuts her version of change, or as she said, she lets time to ch change the page when she doesn't say she is the page, what she would be changing to. So I think she she missed the mark largely on that. New voters that turned out we saw last night were Trump voters that these that we call them zeros out of fours, meaning out of the last four election cycles. They might have been registered, but they have no history of voting. They overwhelmingly voted for Trump. The early vote produced tens of thousands of more votes for Republicans who hadn't voted rather than Harris really didn't turn out any new uh, voters. Exit polling confirmed this trend that we saw for several weeks, particularly out of uh, Nevada. Harris didn't even perform up to the same standards as Joe Biden, even with, with young folks. Uh, interestingly, other than women more broadly, Trump did very, very well with young folks. I think that the Democrats wrote off this idea that overwhelmingly were inclined to break for Trump. I think they kind of just dismissed that much to their peril. Trump had a historically good night with Hispanics, particularly Hispanic men. He has had the best, it was a 33 point shift for Hispanic men from 2020. It's just, it, I can't underscore how massive this was and how Democrats missed the mark. This is a trend, not just that's been going on with Donald Trump. I think it's really also that Democrats have become too woke in the culture wars. Um, and uh, that just doesn't, jive with Latino men, quite frankly, it doesn't jive with what I would call like the alpha man or this this idea of bro culture. The Democrats just dismissed it altogether to their peril. Kamala Harris had an African-American vote problem and an urban problem. They just didn't turn out in the numbers that she needed them to. At the same time, Donald Trump started to eat into this Democratic coalition, uh, which was African-American uh, men uh, for many of the same reasons I just discussed. Kamala Harris is no Scranton Joe. That is in a fundamental issue. Uh, not sure that Joe would have won either, but at least Joe Biden's core brand that he had was able to resonate with working class. Kamala uh, was not able to make that connection. And I think in part because she was so heavily focused on Donald Trump, and I saw a Gallup survey like a week out that said 69% of Americans still don't know much about who Kamala Harris is. So while she might have succeeded in making the case against Trump, she never made the case for who she was other than trite sound bites in 30 seconds. But you need more than that to win these things. We can point to a lot of other things. I think the last thing I would say, although Trump kind of bungled it in the home stretch, I think he actually could have won with bigger margins had he closed stronger. Trump did smartly capitalize on several major moments. Some was preordained, such as the garbage truck moment, that once they saw that moment, they then created the truck. The other was the McDonald's moment, 
is quite strong and on message. But then there were these inorganic moments that you have to give Trump and Trump alone credit for, such as nearly getting assassinated and getting up and yelling, fight, fight, fight. Uh, that that resonated with particularly men at, a, at an organic level that you just couldn't create. I can't recall one moment that Kamala Harris had where that was the case. And the last thing, Alicio alluded to this in his email today, that pollsters and the media, I think in part, got the race wrong because they conflated joy and an initial enthusiasm for Kamala Harris as enthusiasm for Kamala Harris and not so much immediate Democratic relief that it wasn't Joe Biden. And I think they thought they could they could skate on that. It didn't work. So uh, those are my those are my parting thoughts.